hope is found in you. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought.
It's so good to be with you this morning. Kids and youth, you've got your activities and YouTube channels up in the link at the top, so you can click on that. And uh, the live prayer is in the chat um, just below, so you can click on there if you want to be prayed for by the team who are waiting to pray with you this morning. So Sunday mornings, I'm guessing mine and yours look quite different yeah, in terms of our sure. households. Um, <laughs> you've got a three-year-old and a three-week-old. Yeah, yeah. So what's that like on a sunny morning? Um, it's a bit hectic, it's a bit messy, um, lots of colouring, lots of uh, doing dancing. lots of different activities, um, some dancing, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's good, it's good fun. What about mm. you? Yeah, so we um, often do church with another household, so we get to have breakfast together, we can pray with one another, and yeah, it's just a great opportunity to, to keep doing church um, with one another. So yeah, I know it probably looks quite different wherever we are across the Solent watching church this morning, but let's come expectant, ready to meet with God. You happy to pray for us, Nick, before we go into worship? Yeah, Lord, I pray that no matter where we are across the Solent, you would come and you would meet with us. Holy Spirit, that you would meet with us, that you'd be present in our houses, that whether we're whether we've got the smallest of children or we've been a Christian for decades and decades, Holy Spirit, come and meet with us this morning. Amen. Amen. Good morning, KCC. I'm so excited to be leading you through our time of worship this morning. Wherever you are, I just encourage you to stand, sing along with us, dance if you want to, and let's encounter Jesus this morning.
worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new.
song Let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, he is my song For you are good You're good Oh, you are good You're good about God's goodness and how he's never going to let us down and um, he has been so good to us he gave absolutely everything Jesus dying on the cross he, he couldn't have given more 
So we come today as a church family and we, we give again, we give in thanks to him and in worship to him for all that he has first given to us. And as a church, you've just been so generous over the last seven months through lockdown, giving faithfully, giving regularly. The work of God continues to expand, even though as a church we can't meet on a Sunday. So thank you so much. There's one question that I'm sure is on all of your minds at the minute, um, and that's what's going to happen at KCC this Christmas. And we have an amazing opportunity this year because everything is online. So we can get into many more families, many more households can view what KCC is putting out this Christmas. And we would love for you to engage in it, sharing with your friends, inviting them to these online events. Last year, we had over 2,000 people come to our Christmas events, which was amazing. And some of them started coming back in January and uh, more involved in church life. So Emma, what have you got in store for us this Christmas? Yep, so Christmas Eve, there are going to be four different online meeting times. So it'll be the same online meeting, but just be showing it at four different times. And the idea behind that is so that, you know, people can invite friends, neighbours, family members over. You could do like a Christmas Eve brunch. You could do mulled wine and mince pies and just watch together, celebrate together. This year it is called Christmas at the Farm and that is because we're filming at a farm. Very um, good. So we've got real donkeys, sheep, chickens um, and all of the Christmas goodness of carols. Um, we've got the uh, an excellent gospel preach. So it's going to be really excellent for you to invite friends to. Um, and we just want to give you a little information of that, a little heads up. So that's what's happening um, on Christmas Eve, but there'll be obviously more information to follow as the weeks go on so yeah very good looking forward to that and from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon and he entered a house and did not want anyone to know yet he could not be hidden but immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet now the woman was a gentile a Syrophoenician by birth and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed, and the demon gone. I love these stories of Jesus healing people, that with a word or with a touch, Jesus heals. And that is a great thing to be able to talk about when you look at all that is going on at the moment and a world that is rife with sickness. And today we're gonna to look at the story of this woman who comes to Jesus and she is in a desperate situation. Maybe that's your story today. With everything that's been going on over the last six months, a lot of us have found ourselves in those sort of positions. And sometimes we think, is Jesus interested in what I'm going through? Is Jesus interested in my health, my work situation, my problems? Perhaps you've prayed before and not had the answer that you were hoping for or expected. Today we're going to look at what this woman's story teaches us about trusting God when we go through times like that and how Jesus reaches out to us with that same message of hope and healing. Now, where we're starting today in Mark chapter 7, verse 24, we see Jesus is taking a journey. And over the last few weeks, Jesus has been taking lots of journeys. Jesus has been traveling all around Israel, telling people about what God is like, healing the sick, telling people how they can have relationship with God. And Jesus has been gaining quite a reputation. Wherever he goes, people are flocking to see him and hear him. Some are wanting a miracle for themselves, and some love what he's saying and doing, and they're choosing to follow him. Others are rejecting what he says, conspiring against him, wanting him dead even. And for Jesus and his followers, it's been a pretty intense, a pretty busy time. And what we see at the start of this passage is Jesus and his disciples, they're heading north. They go into this place called Tyre and they're not going there to heal more people, but just to get away, to relax, to take a bit of downtime. I want to just pause there for a moment because some listening today, these past few months for you, 
will have been an incredibly demanding, busy time, like nothing you've known before, a traumatic time even. Let's face it, 2020 has been a challenging year. And we're going to look for a moment at how Jesus dealt with times like that. You see, even Jesus, God's son, while he was on earth, didn't just keep going through all the demands. But after busy, difficult times, we often read in Mark, Jesus takes time out. Time to get away, time to recharge. Sometimes it's a short break during the day or the night. Sometimes he goes away on his own just to pray. Sometimes it's a longer period away, alone or together with his closest friends. But the point is this. If Jesus, God's son, while he lived among us as a man, felt the need to do that, how much more do we sometimes need to do that? It's not always easy, but Jesus shows us that we can give, give, give give but sometimes we do need to just slow the pace to look after ourselves to do something that refreshes us to take time on our own or time with others just to relax time with God that helps us to be able to keep going and continue to be effective not just in work but in life that's what Jesus is doing here maybe some of us today need to take that example and try and find those quiet moments where we can be refreshed But then actually what we see is for Jesus getting away and finding some quiet space, it wasn't easy. And so we read on and we're told in the next part of verse 24, he entered a house and didn't want anyone to know, yet he couldn't be hidden. You see, for Jesus, getting out of the public eye was a lot harder than maybe it is for for you and I. Over summer, we were really fortunate. We managed to get a break and a few weeks away in in Cornwall. And we didn't know anyone there. Nobody knew us there. It was a, a quiet, relaxing time. But a few miles up the road, this guy was also taking a holiday. None other than international pop sensation, Peter Andre. And for him, it was a very different story. His holiday was splashed all over the local newspapers. Fans followed him around everywhere he went, wanting autographs, wanting selfies. Now, if I take my shirt off on the beach, then nobody turns their head. Or if they do, it's usually in the opposite direction. But for Six Pack Pete, the paparazzi were there in a flash. I may not have penned global hits with lyrics like, take a look around at what technology has found. Is it what we need or are we killing the seed? Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. This is insania. But for me, actually, that was an advantage. It meant we could go, we could get some peace and quiet. We could have a break. For Peter Andre, it was a very different story. Now, it's not often you hear a talk in church comparing Peter Andre and Jesus. But for Jesus, it was hard for him to go unnoticed here. And so we're told in verse 25, immediately his peace and quiet is interrupted by this woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit. And she'd heard of Jesus and she comes and falls down at Jesus' feet. This woman, she is desperate. That's why she comes and she is begging Jesus, heal my daughter. And from what we've seen of Jesus over recent weeks, you think you could almost guarantee what is going to happen next. Here is someone in a desperate situation and she's looking to Jesus. She's begging, trusting Jesus to heal her little girl. And we've seen situations like this before. You think full of grace and kindness, Jesus is going to reach out and Jesus is going to heal her daughter. And so what happens next actually comes as as quite a surprise because Jesus doesn't heal her daughter, at least not straight away. And a conversation follows between the two of them that causes us to raise raise a few eyebrows because at, at first glance, it sounds like Jesus is being rude or insulting even. Here's this woman, she's thrown herself at Jesus's feet and listen to Jesus's response. Verse 27, let the children, that's the Jewish people, the, the people Jesus was primarily sent to, let the children be fed first for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. What's Jesus saying here? Is Jesus calling her a dog? We're told in verse 26, this woman is a Gentile. That means she wasn't a Jew. She wasn't born a Jew and she didn't worship or trust God like the Jews did. And in Jewish culture, there were Jews 
and they were non-Jews. Non-Jews were called Gentiles, and many Jews would have looked down on the Gentiles. Some even would have called them Gentile dogs, although what Gentiles said of Jews was often equally as insulting. So this woman is brave in coming to Jesus. She is breaking social convention. Here she is, a Gentile, and she is coming to Jesus, a Jew, for help. More than that, she's a a Gentile woman, and she's coming to a a Jewish man. More than that, a, a Jewish teacher. And she's no right to do that. It just wasn't the acceptable thing to do. But this woman, she is driven. She's driven by her love for her daughter, and she's driven by her trust that Jesus can do something for her. And then you hear what Jesus says and you think, well, is Jesus having an off day here? I mean, okay, she has gate crashed his holiday, but we're going to come back to that in a moment. I want us to look as well at what the problem is that this woman is facing. Verse 25, we're told this woman has a daughter who has an unclean spirit. And again, to us, that sounds really strange because in, in our culture, we don't tend to think in terms of good and evil. We can be quite dismissive of the the concept of God and the devil. And we don't know what the exact problem with this girl is, but we often prefer to, to reason things out and come up with a good scientific or medical explanation. But actually the Bible is very clear. There is God who is good and there is the devil who is evil. And good, evil, God, the devil, they're not just subjective things. These are real influences on our lives. We see it maybe more obviously when we look at other cultures. Take African culture, for for instance. In, In Africa, we see large, healthy churches. We see God moving. We see people being healed. And then you also see the power of evil through witch doctors and the hold that that can have on people. In Western UK culture, it might not be as obvious, though sometimes we see people who are oppressed and afflicted in similar ways because of things that they've been into in the past. Things like Ouija boards, the occult, witchcraft. These things can have a lasting, damaging hold on our lives. If you've experienced that in your life, then we'd love to to hear from you and get in touch because we'd love to help and be able to pray for you today. You see, the Bible tells us when we turn to Jesus and turn away from the things we used to do, then it's God who rescues us from the kingdom of darkness and he brings us into the kingdom of his light. And Jesus can do that for you. That is what Jesus is doing for this woman here. She is putting her trust in Jesus to rescue her little girl who is somehow being afflicted and harmed by this unclean spirit. And Jesus sets her free from that. So why doesn't Jesus do what we've seen him do before and just heal her daughter straight away? Instead, Jesus says, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Does Jesus just see her here like any other Jew might have seen her as a Gentile dog? Is is Jesus being racist here? We've got to ask the question. But the answer is clearly no, because his heart does go out to her and he does heal her daughter. But he's pushing back and he's testing her faith and he's not giving her the answer she's expecting. So what is going on here? I think we can best understand Jesus' words like he's using this term Gentile dog in inverted commas. He's quoting how others see her, maybe even how she sees herself. She says in, in verse 28, she almost seems to accept what she's saying. She says, yes, Lord, that's right. She's almost agreeing with him. Yes, Lord, I am a Gentile dog. But then she turns it on his head and says, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And this woman with equally dogged determination comes straight back at Jesus. She says, yes, Lord. She agrees she has no claim on Jesus. She agrees she is a Gentile and Jesus wasn't primarily sent to her. She's not worshipped or trusted God before. She has nothing to bring to the table, but her faith and her trust that Jesus can do this. Do you know, that is how Jesus loves us to come. That is how Jesus calls us to come. The good news Jesus brought is that we can't earn the right to come before God. 
The Bible tells us God is holy, God is perfect, we are not. There are things in our lives that we've done wrong. There are big things, there are little things where we haven't lived up to God's perfect standard. We can't earn the right to have God answer our prayers. No amount of religious practice of being good, of being born into a particular nation or a particular class makes us right before God. See, in many ways, you and I are just like this woman. We have nothing to bring to the table. In fact, the Bible goes so far as to say that we're, we're lost, we're dead in all the wrong things that we've done. Let's face it, a dead person can't do anything to help themselves. This woman coming to Jesus is in a sense a picture of something that is true of us all. But because of God's love, he doesn't turn her away. Jesus doesn't turn her away. He questions her. He looks to see is there genuine faith in her heart. And when he sees that there is, he pulls her, he pulls her situation, he pulls her daughter out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. There's a beautiful verse in a part of the Bible called Isaiah. Isaiah 42 verse 3 says this, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. If ever there was a person who could be described as a, a bruised reed or a smouldering wick, it's this woman here. In her desperate situation, she comes to Jesus. She's been bruised by life. She's been bruised by this situation with her daughter. There's no mention of dad or husband or partner. Maybe she's been bruised in relationships. She's been bruised by society's view of her, treated as if she were a dog. Maybe you feel bruised today. This is God's word to you, a bruised reed he will not break. This woman, she's like the smouldering wick of a candle. She's at the end. She can't cope with anything else going wrong, even the lightest puff of, puff of air. And that's it. Her light, her hope are about to go out. Maybe that's you today. This is God's reassuring, loving word to you. Jesus isn't going to turn you away. A smouldering wick he will not snuff out. In many ways, Jesus came and was sent to those who society saw or who saw themselves as the underdog. But this woman's story, it also teaches us something else. How many of us who have prayed know that sometimes you pray for something and it doesn't happen straight away? Sometimes it can be hard to grasp what is God saying? You know, I think that's how this woman felt here. She's thinking, Jesus, I heard about everything you've done for others. I know you can do this. Why, Jesus, won't you do this for me? And she doesn't at first get the answer from Jesus she's expecting. Maybe you're in that situation today. You've prayed for healing, but you've, you're still not well. You prayed for work, but there's still nothing out there. But this woman, she doesn't give up. She's not going to take no for an answer. She knows that one crumb, just one crumb from Jesus, is better than anything else the world has to offer. And so she persists, she clings to him because she knows he can do this. And when she comes back at him and says, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs, Jesus says, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. It's for her persistence, her faith and her recognizing she needs Jesus, that Jesus answers her prayer. And Jesus told many stories where he encouraged us that sometimes we need to keep asking, to keep seeking, to keep knock, knock, knocking on the door. Knocking on heaven's door wasn't a, a phrase that was coined by Bob Dylan. It was something Jesus taught us to do. Faith and trust in God is often demonstrated when we don't understand our situation, but still we keep coming to God with the persistence this woman does here and trusting that in his goodness, God will answer us. As we wrap up, I want to leave us with three things today. First, you might want to put your trust in Jesus for the very first time today. We all come to God as people who have done something wrong. 
But God sent Jesus to die, to take the punishment of all those wrong things we've done. And if we say, I'm gonna stop living like that and start living for you and trusting you, God, we can be forgiven. If that's you today, we'd love to talk that through more with you. You can press the request prayer button on the screen and you can have a one-to-one -one confidential typed conversation with somebody who would love to chat that through with you. Or maybe today you need healing or you know somebody who does. We would love to pray for you today. It's been a great privilege over the weeks that we've been online to be able to pray for people and see how God answers our prayers. You might be in that situation where you've prayed before when nothing has happened. I would encourage you, don't give up, but persist in coming to Jesus like this woman we read about here. Again, press the request prayer button and a member of our prayer team would love to pray with you. And finally, for those of us who are followers of Jesus, what Jesus is doing here is an example of what he has called us all to do. You see, we've honed, on, honed in today on this woman's individual story, but there is a bigger story at play here. At the end of Mark's account of Jesus' life, Jesus calls his followers together and he tells them, go into the whole world and show and tell everyone the good news that we can have relationship with God. What Jesus is doing here is an example of what he calls us all to do. You know, every time we talk to a neighbor, a friend, a stranger in the street, we're doing what Jesus started here. Every time we step out of our comfort zone and reach out to someone whose society has maybe written off or who've written off themselves, we're following the example of what Jesus is doing here. Every time we take an opportunity to pray for someone who needs God to heal them, we're doing what Jesus is doing here. Jesus calls us to continue in his example, to take the good news that God heals, God rescues, God restores everywhere we go. This week in our workplaces, our colleges, our universities, our schools, in our streets, with friends, with relatives, with strangers, let's look for opportunities to do that.
as we draw to the end of our online meeting this morning, I want to give us a chance to pray for those who need healing, who are sick and in pain. So let's just take a moment. If that's you, just shut your eyes, put your hands out if you feel comfortable, and I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, Father, we just thank you for what we have just heard, that Jesus, you are able to heal and you are full of compassion towards us. And I just pray for all of those who've got their hands open to you right now, who are sick, who are in pain, who just life feels really tough because of their sickness and things that are going wrong in their bodies. And I just command healing in Jesus' name that you would come and bring restoration, that you would come and bring life and strength and just full health back to everyone's bodies, Lord. Would you come and do that, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Emma. It's been so good being together today. And um, if you're a visitor, we would love to connect with you more. So if you can fill out the form just that comes up in the chat, just click the button and it will take you straight through. And live prayer is going to be open for 15 minutes after the end of the meeting. It's been so good to see you today. Bye bye.
kingdom come As I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Loud Hurry!
your name and our hope is found in you. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought. Then 